the light of the flare made one thing quite clear. It wasn't a man-made staircase. At least, it didn't look like one. It appeared to be hewn out of the descending rock, meaning that the original cliff would have extended further into the cave. The stairs were rough and uneven, but it was close enough for government work, as the saying goes. What is it? One of the group members asked from behind me. Looks like a natural staircase of sorts, I answered, distracted. I withdrew another glow stick from my bag and planted it at the top of the stairs. Let's go. We descended cautiously, for caves are notoriously deceptive. Ahead of me, the darkness grew thicker. It seemed palpable, almost physical. As if my thoughts were true, the flares we held seemed to diminish in the face of the abyss. After fifty or so steps, I reached the bottom. That's when I heard the crack. It sounded like a gunshot, loud and sharp. I spun at the foot of the stairs. Behind me, Jason was tumbling roughly down the last few steps, straight towards me. I spun out of the way and he crashed onto the floor, moaning in agony. The rest of the group hurried towards me, concerned, as I bent to inspect the injury. It was obvious. His ankle was twisted at an unnatural angle, clearly broken. Jason's face had rapidly lost color. Karen, Vincent, grab him by the arms. Careful, I said quietly, unwilling to exasperate the situation by panicking. They picked him up slowly, his ankle dangling grotesquely beneath him. Something glinted under the crimson light of the flares. I knew it was bone. I reached into my pack taking out two small batons and a white bandage. This is going to hurt, I warned. The caution was wasted on Jason anyway. He was half unconscious. I grabbed his ankle and twisted. His ankle cracked again. That roused Jason from his stupor. He screamed piercingly, loudly enough to hurt my ears. Quickly, trying not to prolong his agony, I wound the bandage around the batons, which braced either side of his leg. The screaming stopped, but not because the pain had faded. He was unconscious. Take him up to the entrance of the cave into the hospital. If he wakes, give him these painkillers, I told his helpers. Karen and Vincent nodded and began the arduous climb up to the surface, holding their unconscious ward. Shouldn't we go with them? I mean, his ankle was... Ashley began, but I cut him off. No. We've come this far and we're not going to stop now. I want to investigate this cave to the end. Remember, I told you that you couldn't change your mind. I said sharply, taking out my anger at letting the accident happen under my leadership on him. Ashley, known as Ash to his friends, but I never used that, fell silent. I felt a fleeting sense of guilt at my attitude. But I brushed it off and spun around. Already Jason and the others were out of view. Around the group, the darkness surrounded us like a malevolent entity. The landing we were on led further into the cave for quite a while, and we proceeded incident-free, thankfully. I marked our progress with the glow sticks at various intervals. Strangely, like the flares, they gave off less light the deeper we progressed. It began to unnerve me and I could tell the others noticed it too. Alex and Samantha, who were incidentally brother and sister, fell a few steps behind us. Ashley, to my right, was silent. Finally, as the flares grew even dimmer, I saw something in the wall to my right. I called the diminished group over and cracked a new flare to provide extra light. It appeared to be some sort of carving in the wall. I studied it carefully. The scene depicted a few humanoid forms on the ground. A few scratches of red seemed to indicate wounds. Various pillars around them rose to the roof of the cavern. But that wasn't nearly the worst part. In front of the people, the victims I now corrected myself, was a large figure. It may have had detail in the past, but only the outline remained. The body was scratched out. It was a disturbing scene. Then I looked beneath the scene, and my eyes widened. It had a message. <laughs>